I've been using these Amazon Echo Buds for the past year now. And while I originally bought them because I wanted to see kind of what the $50 price point could offer, I actually end up using them more than my Galaxy Buds 2 Pro and my Galaxy Buds 2 now. And they're actually surprisingly a solid little set for the price that you can get them for. They cost $50, but you can typically find them on sale for around $35 sometimes. I'll also share some tips and tricks of things I've learned over my course of ownership. I've actually been pretty impressed with them all around. And part of my reason also for getting them was that I've lost many expensive earbuds. So having something that you don't have to worry about as much is a really nice peace of mind when you're out and about and traveling. The kind of open design as well really is, is great because like these Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, for example, they have active pass-through, but in my opinion, no active pass-through is gonna sound as good as having a more open design for when you're actually trying to hear things in your environment and still have music going. The only other thing that might rival these in terms of open design is the Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses I reviewed, but those are about six times the price, so not really that comparable. Now the audio quality of these buds is surprisingly good. They have pretty good dynamic range, and that's due to the new 12 millimeter drivers that they've added. Surprisingly, I've found them to be almost comparable to my Buds 2. They're certainly not comparable to my Buds 2 Pro because these support SSC and high quality codecs and just have better drivers in general. They have two drivers. But for $35 to $50, like these sound pretty good. This was certainly my biggest surprise was how they actually sound in general. One noticeable thing is the bass is a little bit reduced. And that brings me to my next point, the app. It is uh, pretty good. One thing I will say is that when I first bought them, I remember I originally added them through my phone's Bluetooth settings, but you should add them through the Alexa app first because then you'll get the EQ. I think when I had originally added them, because I didn't do it in the app, the app wasn't detecting them. So I was like struggling to find the EQ. I'll show you a quick demo here, but there are three points you can control in the app here for the EQ. And I find that raising the bass a little bit gives them a better sound profile, personally. It's something we've started to see in a lot of earbuds recently, and it's a nice touch here for something so inexpensive. They do have Bluetooth 5.2. I will say my one gripe about them is that I do sometimes get small little dropouts, but it's not very often, so it doesn't personally bother me. I've gotten dropouts sometimes on these much more expensive buds, and that's just something that is gonna take some time for Bluetooth to get a little bit better and uh, have those happen less frequently. Speaking of the design, they are very similar looking to Apple AirPods, the base model, and they have the little stem that comes out, which can actually help a little bit with microphone quality. We'll get to a mic test later, so you can kind of see what they sound like. Personally, I find them to be incredibly comfortable. Uh, they're more comfortable than either of these for me, but this is very subjective because everyone's ear shape is very different. I've never had them fall out, and I've you know tried a lot of sports with them. I bike a lot, and that is actually one of the biggest reasons that I like these a lot, is that I can actually safely bike. These, for example, have terrible pass-through. There's just a lot of wind noise. These are some of the first ones that have really good pass-through where they do some wind blocking, but I just don't feel it's as natural sounding and I don't think I can hear the cars as well when I'm biking as I can with these. They do have these little silicon covers now, which I think adds a little bit to the grip. And uh, like I said, for me, they work really well. They are incredibly light. They're only five grams, so they Way, they feel like they weigh next to nothing for me. I've read people online that didn't find them as comfortable. So it's, like I said, it's really subjective because everyone's shape of their ear is different. But for me, I find it works perfectly. Having your voice assistant, I won't say her name so she doesn't trigger yours if you have one in the house, but having her in your ears can be good. You can also disable that and that will actually improve your battery life because it's not always listening for the, the catch word. So you can improve your battery by I think about an hour if you disable that feature, just a little tip for you. They do not include a charging cable in the box with it, but 
personally, I have a million USB-C cables, so I actually think that that's a good thing, contributing to less e-waste overall. But if you do not have a USB-C cable, then just note you will need to buy a, a separate one here. Really quickly, for the pricing, these go on sale pretty regularly, as I've seen, and I think the sale price tends to be 35 bucks. They are normally 49 or 50 bucks around there. And Prime Day is coming up in a couple weeks, so uh, just keep your eye out for that. All the links below are affiliate links, so if you're finding this review helpful, that's a useful way to kick back to the channel at no additional cost to you. The controls are touch sensitive, and within the Alexa app, like I was telling you, you can actually change what they do. So they don't out of the box come with volume control, but you can customize volume control in the app with different gestures or long holds or things like that. The case is generally pretty good. I'll uh, try to maybe get some close up shots here, but you can see the uh, wear that it's had over a year. Feels kind of like a recycled plastic, but feels kind of medium quality, I'd say. The case doesn't feel the most high quality, but I mean, to be honest, it's just something you carry it around in and for under 50 bucks, you can't really expect something like super high quality, but it feels solid and the USB-C charging is nice. The case provides uh, 20 hours of battery with the buds and actually is really nice for charging. It's got the quick charge feature, which for 15 minutes of charging, you get up to two hours. So nice to have that in a pinch. There's a button too here, which you hold and it turns blue, like a flashing blue for the pairing. My only wish would maybe be that they sold a uh, higher quality case with wireless charging and then you could be able to like charge it on your phone like I can with the either of these uh, buds here. I think they actually had a wireless charging case for the 2021 version or something like that, like it was an optional case. So that would be something cool if they released it for this. One feature I really did not expect for this to have was what they call seamless switching. And that is actually something very useful where when I'm on my laptop and my phone at the same time, whatever source is playing, it will just switch to that. And that's something that's definitely like a more pro feature that I didn't expect to have on these, but it's really nice that Amazon included that here. For the battery life, I've averaged about five hours. I think you can extend it to almost up to an hour if you turn off the voice detection. And it does have a voice detection accelerometer, which is uh, actually good for your microphone. So I will go into a quick microphone test here and you can get an example of what it might sound like on a call. Alrighty, so I am recording the microphone on the Amazon Echo Buds 2023. There is a little bit of uh, background fan noise here. I'm in an airport room here, so we'll see if that picks up. And this should give you a little audio test of the microphones on the Amazon Echo Buds. They do have two microphones in here, so it does sound pretty good in general. The reason I enjoy these a lot is that when I am just kind of going in and out of the house or, or just going locally, I use these all the time. Sure, if I'm going on a flight, then I absolutely want to have one of these with active noise cancellation. But I've probably owned 15 pairs of wireless earbuds over the past, I don't know, seven, eight years. And I've certainly lost a good amount of the expensive ones because they either slipped out of a pocket or fell out of a jacket pocket. With these kind of small designs, they are relatively easy to lose. These, like if I lost them, they're, you know, 50 bucks, uh, I could probably rebuy them for 35. And so I just like, don't worry about them at all. And uh, the waterproofness, I found the IPX2 to be generally pretty good. I've biked with them in the rain. I've been out in the rain with them and I've never had any issues with the water ingress. In terms of the competition, I think these Amazon Echo Buds are almost in a league of their own. There are certainly like JBLs that you can get around the $40, $50 price point, but I don't think they have as many features and they also don't have the active pass-through sometimes. An active pass-through, like I mentioned, on cheaper models is going to sound pretty rubbish in general. And these just give you a natural open design where you can hear a little more outside. But if you are interested in other designs and maybe these don't fit you the best, then I will link a few others below that are relatively in the same price point as uh, this, this category here. If sound quality is very important to you or you want really good noise cancellation, then I will put my review of these two devices here. 
the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro and the new Bose QuietComforts here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.